the board meeting for Tuesday, April 20th. If everybody could please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please. Mrs. Yetzi? Here. Mrs. McCarthy? Here. Mrs. Saxon? Here. Mrs. Tamira? Here. Mr. Vaca? Here. Finalization of the agenda. Is there anything to add and or delete? The agenda is final as presented. Thank you. It is recommended that the Board of Education approve the written summary of the regular meeting minutes for the meetings on March 2nd, 2021 and March 16th, 2021. Move. Second. Moved by Ms. Tamara, second by Ms. Uh, Ms. McCarthy. Roll call, please. Mrs. Tamara? Yes. Mrs. McCarthy? Yes. Mrs. Yetzi? Yes. Mrs. Saxon? Yes. Mr. Vaca? Yes. All right, we'll move right into the superintendent's report. Excellent. We have two reports tonight under our superintendent's report. <clears throat> and the first is a recognition from our endowment funds committee. With us tonight, we have Mr. Daryl Edwards, who I see up in the Zoom screen, and Mayor Kevin Corcoran, um, who are here to present to us the General Fund Grants, the Fine Art Grants, and the Shannon Edwards Memorial Fund Grants for the 2020-2021 school year. Good evening, everybody. I'm here this evening representing the North Ridgeville City Schools Endowment Funds, and I'm proud to present this year's grants to the staff and support personnel. As you may be aware, there are three separate fund sources within the funds. There's the General Fund, the Fine Arts Fund, and the Shannon Edwards Memorial Fund. Over the past 30 years, the endowment funds have grown due to the generous contributions of businesses, North Ridgeville City Schools employees, parents, and private individuals. Grant awards are funded from the interest generated by the investment of these contributions, <clears throat> allowing a perpetual source of funding to enhance the educational experiences of North Ridgeville City Schools students. This year, the endowment funds are awarding a total of $13,268 in grants for the 25 applications that were submitted. And I have a list. Starting off, the in the general fund, there is an award of 7,655 grants to the following individuals. Madonna McGregor Vincent, $300 for sensory equipment for OT. Melissa Powell, $250 for pocket microscopes. Jody Gregg, $353 for super duper learners. Linda McCormick, I'm sorry, Linda Cormack, uh, $675 for majorettes for North Ridgeville City Schools. Karen uh, Kredovix, uh, $1,500 for fifth grade generation genius. Carla Ponting, $102 for a classroom set of dry erase boards. Caitlin Carlo, $130 for an Echo Show 8 for independent living skills. Gus Matthew, $3,300 for a learning programming through Raspberry Pi. Sherry Bykowski, $275 for social emotional curriculum at ECLC. Linda Reiner, $130 for uh, Can You Hear Me Now? Headphones for Title I Reading. Carly Samison, $250 for Life Cycle PBL. Melanie Knopf. $250 for Lucy Calkins, Lifesaver, and Kelly Kajawa, $140 for Math and Science. From the Fine Arts Fund, there is an award of 3,000, total award of $3,447 in grants to the following. Lisa Cormack, $1,447 for Music Tech Equipment. $1,000 to Sarah Miller for Carl Repertoire. Jessica Ramage, $1,000 for Liberty Digital Art Curriculum Enhancement. 
We also have the Shannon Edwards Memorial Fund, and I'll turn that over to Daryl Edwards, who's joining us through Zoom to read those out. It looks like we may have just lost him. Really? <laughs> he was there for so long. He was there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, if he doesn't come back, I can handle the next part. I'm sure of it. All right, I know the, uh, obviously the Shannon Edwards Memorial Fund is near and dear to Daryl and Karen Edwards. It's uh, the original fund was started on behalf of their daughter, Shannon. And there's a total of $2,166 in grants that are going to the following. Becky Jane, $155 for It's All About Numbers. $87 to Cheryl Munson for Counting Calculations. $170 to Sarah Abato and Melody McDonald for Classroom Sensory Corner. $200 to Leslie Clace. Uh, that's for Super Scientists. $514 for Rachel McHugh for Seeking Sensory Discovery. And then there's several that have been going to Gretchen Hersberger. Uh, $300 for Bolting Toward the Future. $250 for Steam is a Snap. $240 for Surfing Through Seating. And $250 for Pop into Fidgets. Again, uh, all these grants wouldn't be possible without the support of all the staff, uh, the teachers, the uh, board members, the community. Uh, it's a great honor for us to be able to do these and hand out these grants each and every year. Uh, our next effort will be the scholarship that we hand out. And uh, we're just happy to be here and help out. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. And congratulations to all of our staff members who have joined us this evening uh, via Zoom. We appreciate your work in, again, donating to the fund and making sure that this is possible and having the ability to take the time to write for the grants and working to enhance the educational experience of our kids. So thank you all very much. Mr. Edwards just came back on. You want to see if yes. you... Mr. Edwards, you're back with us. If you'd like to say a few words, uh, Mayor was able to share the grants that uh, did fall under Shannon Edwards Memorial. But if you wanted to say a few words, please, please do. And you are currently muted. Can you unmute Paul? Oh. I've been asked to unmute. Okay. He was. <laughs> Mr. Edwards, did you care to say a few words? Uh, he, dropped, he dropped off. No, he's still in. Yeah. Okay, Mr. Edwards, if you do jump back in, if you want to. Uh, Yay, there we go. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> What was neat is I had audio, but I had no video, which means I couldn't hit the unmute button. Oh, no. But anyway, before we get knocked off again, okay, so I should be able to go through this now. It's, uh, have you read the names for the uh, Shannon Edwards? We have. we have. We have. Okay, well, just yeah, the, just to give a little more information, you know, this is the 20th year since Shannon passed away. And uh, <laughs> keep getting older and older and older. My hair's changing colors. But it's 20 years ago uh, when she passed away. She had a very rich life. And just, well, of course, we've missed her tremendously. She was at Wilcox. And this is what's interesting. You know, Wilcox, pretty soon people won't know what that is either. Um, but she passed away in March of, of uh, 2001. She was a fifth grade student. Established this memorial fund as a way to express our appreciation for their outstanding continuing response. And that uh, note of appreciation, we do. Well, we went through the names, the yield things I'd like.
board and there's some additional information that'll be coming uh, so that not the awardees for uh, the dropout and that's that spectrum for us. <laughs> well, thank you very much. Um, again, we appreciate your contribution on behalf of your daughter and appreciate all that you do for North Ridgeville City Schools. So again, congratulations to all of this year's recipients. I know that those funds will be good, to, to very good use in our classrooms. Uh, the next portion of the superintendent's report is recognizing our April employees of the month. And I will turn it over to Mr. Pritt. Thank you, good evening, board. Good evening. Each month, one certified and one support staff member is selected for the positive impact they've had on the North Ridgeville City Schools. Their selection is based upon staff input and their belief about why a nominee is deserving of recognition. I am proud to announce that the April staff members of the month are Annette Grant and Joseph Delawall. Annette Grant is an intervention specialist at Liberty Elementary. Annette began her career as a substitute teacher and an hourly home instructor with the North Ridgeville City Schools in 1996. She was hired as an elementary intervention specialist at Wilcox Elementary on June 19, 2001. Throughout her career, she has taught summer school intervention for first and second graders and has continued as an hourly tutor and instructor. Annette Grant deserves to be recognized for her dedication and hard work she has shown to the students here in the district for the past 25 years. In our classroom setting, we work with students on many different levels, and Annette accommodates them all so that each working to their highest potential. This year in particular, we have, with having to work on Zoom and some of our students at home, she still shows patience and care to each one. I've had the pleasure of working with Annette for the last four years, and she continues to impress me with her new and innovative lessons for our students. Congratulations to Annette for being named April Certified Staff Member of the Month. Our second nominee is Joseph Delawall. Joe began his career with North Ridgeville City Schools as a lunchroom monitor at the middle school on April 19, 2014. Joe became an instructional aide at the middle school on December 12, 2016, and a personal aide for a student with special needs on September 5, 2017. Joe has continued to work with this student one-on-one, -on -one, following him to Murray Ridge School. During his career with NRCS, he has worked the extended school year program for students with special needs. This year, Joe has been working at our NRAC 3-4 building, wherein he is not with his student at Murray Ridge. A nominator stated about Mr. Delawall, he always comes to work with a smile. His positive attitude is contagious. He is always so kind to all of our students. Congratulations, Joseph, on being selected the April Support Staff Member of the Month. Congratulations to both Annette and Joe. Um, again, we are so very fortunate as a school district to have you um, as our staff members of the month and to be working with our students each and every day. Uh, and congratulations to all of this year's staff members of the month. This will be our final presentation for the year. Um, as our next meeting in May, we will honor our district retirees. Uh, so thank you again and congratulations. And that concludes the superintendent's report. Thank you very much. <clears throat> okay. Is there any announcements this evening? Mr. Rocca, I'd just like to point out, um, if I may, under announcements, that we have lots of um, activities that are coming up uh, this spring, including um, golf outings from the, for the swim team and golf outing for the endowment fund. So I would just encourage people to look on our website um, and find more information about all the activities coming up this spring. Yep. All right, now here's an opportunity for hearing of the public. At this point in time, if you'd like to address the board, just please keep in mind notes will be taken and the correct individual will follow up with you in a timely manner. Each participant is allocated three minutes with a total of 30 minutes reserved for this portion of our meeting.
Okay, I've now given the uh, participants the opportunity to unmute their microphones if they would like to ask a question to the board. We ask that you please state your name and your address. Thank you. Looks like we have none, so we will go then proceed. Thank you. All right, we'll move into the consents agenda. It is recommended that the Board of Education approve the consents agenda resolution as presented. Uh, page 17. All right, again, who was that moved back? Uh, me. Ms. McCarthy, Secretary Ms. Tamira. Is there any discussion this evening? Roll call, please. Mrs. McCarthy? Yes. Mrs. Tamira? Yes. Mrs. Yetzi? Yes. Mrs. Saxon? Yes. Mr. Baca? Yes. Okay, we'll move into the finance audit report. There's one item for your consideration under the finance audit report. It is recommended that the Board of Education approve the financial reports for March 2021. Second. Moved by myself, second by Ms. McCarthy. Roll call, please. Mr. Vaca? Yes. Mrs. McCarthy? Yes. Mrs. Yetzi? Yes. Mrs. Saxon? Yes. Mrs. Tamira? Yes. Okay, we'll move on to the Education Committee report. Ms. Tamira? Thank you. There are two items for consideration. First is a resolution to authorize the superintendent to implement a portion of the Ohio House Bill 67, which allows Ohio public school districts the flexibility to modify adopted graduation requirements that exceed the current state minimum requirements, which are 20 units. Second, it is recommended that the Board of Education approve the 2021 summer school brochure. I move to approve the education report in one reading. Second. Moved by Ms. Tamira, second by Ms. Saxon. Is there any discussion? I did have a um, question for Mr. Pritt, if you don't mind. Um, Mr. Fred, I was just um, actually a couple questions. First, though, about House Bill 67 and the graduation requirements. Can you tell us how that's going to be helpful to our current class? Yeah, absolutely. So we anticipate that this will help somewhere between six and 10 students. Okay. And what it does is it reduces the minimum, allows the district to reduce its 22 credits down to 20. What it doesn't change are the requirements that students still have to pass four years of math and four years of English and things like that. But really where it helps us is some of those elective courses that students might not have been able to get in in the last year, um, whether it's because of the shortened school day or maybe they struggled with some of those things. So it's really those elective courses that are allowing us to pull back to the minimums to allow those students to have those credits who have already met their other district requirements for graduation to graduate on time. Thank you. And my next question or comment is about um, summer school for those students that um, are not graduating and need to make up credits. Can you tell us how that will work for those students wanting to um, get extra credit this summer? Yeah, absolutely. So the courses are being taught um, either in person, live instruction, depending on the course area or through Apex, depending on the course area. And what we have done is we have kind of um, built a schedule that is a session right after school is out and another one just before school starts. During each of those sessions, a student can earn up to an entire credit. So the students have the in-class time that they're gonna be working, but then there's also an expectation that they're working outside of the classroom. So they, uh, because each credit is a semester, they can do two semesters at first session, two semesters during the second. So they could really pick up um, in a motivated student who needed to, to pick up two credits over the course of the summer. Okay. And something that's new this year for our summer school program is that we're going to be able to offer limited transportation. That is correct. So one of the one of the things that we put together as part of our extending learning plan was the summer school program. It's been revamped and a piece of that to reach out to the community and recognize that that's a challenge for some of our families to take advantage of a program like summer school is the ability to get students to school. Um, so we are working with transportation. That is one of the questions now that is on the sign up sheet is do you require school transportation in order to attend? And then we've been working um, with Tammy over at transportation to make sure that as those students register, we can provide that transportation to get them here because we don't think that should be a barrier to discontinued learning. Um, a lot of our students are in this um, position through no fault of their own. Great, so. right, great. Thank you. And again, and, and we've said this, I think, before, but um, there's no cost for 
this program this summer. Be that is correct. Under the um, extended learning plan that we have put together, the, the board will use either general funds or some of our ESSER funds that's being provided by the federal government to um, fund all of our summer activities. So there would not be a charge this year for our Northridge Hill City School students. Thank you. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Roll call, please. Mrs. Tamira? Yes. Mrs. Saxon? Yes. Mrs. Yetzi? Yeah. Mrs. McCarthy? Yes. Mr. Vaca? Yes. And we'll move on to the buildings and operation report. As part of the district summer projects through the operations department, there are several roofing repair projects that need to take place. The high school has approximately 60,000 square feet of roofing that needs to be restored due to continual leaking. By the early childhood learning community needs five roof drains installed to prevent future leaking issues. I move to approve the building and operations report in one reading. Second. Move by myself, second by Ms. McCarthy. Is there any discussion? I just had a question for Mr. Yunker. Um, can you tell us the time frame? If this will take place? Yeah, with, with the way that the school year is set up this year and the high school students only being in session on Wednesday, um, the high school roof were able to get started in, in May, weather permitting, um, you know, when it doesn't <laughs> snow in, in late April. Um, so our, our anticipation is that that will get started in May uh, and we'll have ample opportunity. That's a pretty substantial project that's gonna be taking place at the high school. So that'll ensure that it gets done well in advance at the start of next school year. And then the ECLC building will truly take place over the summer once the students are out of that building. Okay, thank you. Roll oh, call, please. Mr. Vaca? Yes. Mrs. McCarthy? Yes. Mrs. Yetzi? Yes. Mrs. Saxon? Yes. Mrs. Tamira? Yes. Okay, we'll move into the Human Resources Report. Ms. Saxon? Yes, we have two items in the Human Resources Report. One, amendment to the Administrative Handbook. One, certified staff resignation. I move to approve the Human Resources items in one reading. Second. Move by Ms. Saxon, second by Ms. Tamira. Is there any discussion? Roll call, please. Mrs. Saxon? Yes. Mrs. Tamira? Yes. Mrs. Yetzi? Yes. Mrs. McCarthy? Yes. Mr. Vaca? Yes. All right. It is recommended that the Board of Education enter executive session to discuss the employment of a public official. There will be no action to follow. Second. Moved by Ms. Tamira, second by Ms. McCarthy. Roll call, please. Mrs. Tamira? Yes. Mrs. McCarthy? Yes. Mrs. Yetzi? Yeah. Mrs. Saxon? Yes. Mr. Vaca? Yes. Well, thank you everybody for joining us this evening and uh, enjoy the cool weather and the snow that's soon to follow. <laughs> <laughs>